um, some Excel basics. Some of you probably have used Excel, and if you do, please be patient. Some folks have never touched it before, so we'll see what we can do. Uh, we're going to try to create a ta table, not a table, a tab that um, we're going to use to calculate standard DB. Oh, kitty, kitty. Nope, not now. Why'd you come now? You weren't here all afternoon. Um, to calculate standard deviation. And of course, if we remember, um, we're going to get to standard deviation via calculating variance. So um, first, we're going to we're going to put the uh, some of the data points, a few of them, just to get some framework. And so here is our x sub i, and I'm going to type in x underscore i underscore in a uh, in some programming language would, would indicate subscript. So that's what we're going to do. X sub i, remember, is all the x's. And then we would type in x sub 1 here, but actually type the data for x sub 1. And then this will be x sub 2, x sub 3, and then the data is going to be listed down below. Okay. So the first couple I have here are 6, 2, 3, 5. Um, and those were the first four data points remember we asked the question how many colleges did you apply to just for uh, cleanliness I'm going to center this row uh, which is which uh, is a row of my header values or uh, column header uh, this is going to be the calculation of this minus the mean the unfortunate thing is we don't yet have the mean. So we're going to type in x minus, and I'm going to type in x bar. x minus x bar. x bar, remember, is x with a line over top, with a bar on top of it. And that is our mean. You could use mu if we were talking about a population. But for this, we can't switch back and forth very easily. Um, and in our calculation, it's in at this point in time, our calculation is not significantly different from if we're calculating the standard deviation of a population or standard deviation of a sample. So we have to also calculate the mean of our data. So I'm going to come over here. I don't know exactly which column I want to use. So I'm going to calculate the mean. Let's do it this way. We're going to say, um, we're going to type in mean. Uh, we're going to type in x bar, x underscore bar, and we're going to calculate x bar as equaling the sum. Now, if I type the equal symbol, I'm telling Excel that I want or to write a function. Now, when I write a function, I'm actually going to point to cells in which I want to use as part of my function as a formula. So I want it to calculate from a cell, from information in a cell. A cell is one of these little boxes. And so when I do that, I can take the value inside that particular box that I'm pointing to and change it to whatever I want and not have to adjust my formula. So the way I think of it is I'm trying to make my spreadsheet smart as opposed to my spreadsheet dumb. And if that's offensive, it's not intended to be. I'm saying it's not as intelligently built or thoughtfully built to do the work for me. I'm essentially using it as a calculator and that's not what I want it to do. I want it to, or if you want to say, I want to use it as a powerful calculator, not a simple one plus two calculator. So I'm going to type in sum and I'm going to hit parentheses and now I'm going to select these four cells. That's not what we're going to do in the end, but for now we're going to collect the, check those four cells, select those four cells, and I'm going to close parentheses. So I just entered this, the formula sum, summation, of A2 through A5. When I hit enter, it should tell me 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16. Pow, 16. If I add a number here, the next number was 4, it won't add it to this. Now, Excel puts a little green triangle here it's saying, uh, dude, you entered a number underneath our stack. Did you want to include that in our little stack? If I click on that, it's going to tell me uh, formula omits adjacent cells, this being adjacent to that bottom one next to. It's below, but same thing. Update formula to include that cell. So I can do that. Or I could have went in and changed this selection to be this selection. OK, 
Okay, and we're gonna make it smarter than this in the end, but there we go. So now we actually have a sum. Now we don't want that sum, we actually want the mean. So we're gonna adjust our formula. This whole thing is the sum. What I want to do is take that sum and divide it by how many there are. Now I can say five, and that's making it somewhat intelligent because I'm doing that. But what happens if I add another number here, the next number is nine, it's gonna give me the little green bar. And it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna include that nine? Well, yes, please include that nine. So now if I double click this and then select the A2, and you can see that it's selecting A7 as well. But I'm dividing by five, not six. So I have to manually go in and change this to a six. Okay. Now let's make that a little bit smarter if the way I would think of it. So I'm gonna put um, N up here like that. And I'm gonna put in here equals count. I think that's the, uh, the function I want, count. And I wanna select, uh, I gotta cursor this over, come on now. Uh, um, I want to count those uh, that I think that's what I want and it's going to tell me that there's six so now I'm going to go in here and not divide by six but I want to divide by this adjacent cell and so G2 you could also just type in G2 if you can see that it's G two and now it's doing it automatically if I add a number down here the next day that number was six if I enter six here it's going to give me the little green bar this green bar is saying hey do you want to include the adjacent the adjacent cell that you uh, you were counting in uh, so let me select it very nicely there yes please and then this one I would have to do the same thing I won't do it that way I'm just trying to educate you a little bit right Okay, so now our average or our mean is five. So now when I do this calculation in this cell, I wanna take this number, so I wanna hit equals. I wanna say six. I could type in six minus five, but again, that's not very intelligent because as soon as I add another value to this whole thing and change the mean and whatnot, that six might be correct, but the five won't be. Additionally, we wanna make this so that I can enter a whole new set of data in this column and everything over here automatically updates. So we wanna type in not six minus five, but hey, this cell minus X bar, okay? So six minus five is one, and this is X minus X bar. So um, I want, now this is where Excel is, is, is wonderful as well. I want to do this repetitively so instead of doing it manually, you saw me start to do that and then bail on it because you guys just use Staplet, which is fine. I don't want, I want Excel to do that work for me. So I'm gonna take this and hover over this little corner until this cursor becomes a plus sign. Then I'm gonna click on it and it allows me to drag the box. That's what we're doing. We're dragging that cell. More importantly, we're dragging the formula that's in that cell to be copied into here. Now what it's doing also is it's copying the formula and its relative references. So there's going to be an error. Right now it's subtracting two minus five and getting two, no. It's subtracting two minus zero because there's nothing in this cell. When I did this up here, this is actually not just A2, this is taking A2, the cell to the left of me. This is taking A3, the cell that is left to me, and subtracting F3, the cell that's four over to the right, because that's what we've told it up here. Now, if I want to have a fixed, not a relative reference, not based on my relative position, but a fixed, I can add dollar signs. So dollar sign F, dollar sign two, is telling you always take it from this cell here labeled F2. Still get the same value, but watch when I copy this one down, it's saying take the cell to the left and subtract always from this cell F2. And now two minus five is negative three. That's exactly what we want. Now, if we're still looking at this formula, X minus the mean, we have to square it. So this column is going to be this stuff 
squared. So I'm going to put parentheses, paste that in there, and then I'm going to hit caret and 2. So we know that it's that thing squared. So we're just going to take this cell and we're going to square it. Equals this. And then we can use the same symbol, which is caret shift 6 squared. We're not referring to any other cell than the one to my directly to my left. So I'm just going to copy that down. And now we want to take all of those things and add them up. So this is, I think I want to delete these columns. Is that right? Is that right? Well, I can insert them if I want. So I moved all the way over here to the right, to create some space. And it wasn't, I didn't remember how many columns I was going to use. So I'm going to delete those columns. So I've clicked this, holding my left button down and selecting that one as well. And I'm going to hit edit, delete. And it deleted those two cells and moved these over. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, type in the sum of those numbers. And that's my variance. So variance. And I think I want to change the formatting of this. So let's do this. I'm going to take X bar and I'm going to select it by selecting the cells. I'm clicking left, holding, and move sliding down. Then I'm going to drag this cursor up until I get a hand, that hand. And I grabbed it and I'm moving it down two spaces because it makes sense to me that this is to the left of that. Now, what Excel is doing is keeping all of the relative and fixed references. So this used to say F2. When I deleted the cells, it changed it to D2, or excuse me, the columns, and it changed it to D2 in here. And now it's going to say D4, dollar sign D4. It understands that when I moved it, I didn't want to break all that, all those references to that cell. Maybe I did want it, but most of the time we don't, so it defaults to that. And in the case we wanted it to break and change something, then I would just go in and manually change it. Now here I'm going to type in variance again. And variance is going to be below. We could have put them next to or to the right. Um, and that's just not how I organized it. Uh, your, if your brain works differently, you can do that. If you wanted to, you could insert. Uh, uh, insert. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, I want to go over here. Insert. Take column left. Columns. And we can scrunch this down if we sort of wanted to separate and like. Uh, fill that in and make a big black bar or something like that, like that, because they would want the whole column to look like that or something. I don't know, just to separate this from the, the data and the calculations of individual data pieces. Now the variance is the sum of the squares of the differences. So I'm going to hit equals sum and I'm going to select this whole column and hit enter. And that's the variance and the standard deviation. is equal to the square root of that number. So I think we have to type in SQRT, parentheses, this cell, close parentheses, and we get the standard deviation. Now, the reality is, is we want to type in the rest of these numbers and then see what where that goes. So I got 12, 13, no, that's not 13, 12, 3, Five, seven, nine, eighteen, ten, one, eight, and one. Is that last one me? I can't remember. I guess we'll find out in a second. Um, over here, in we're going to fix these by updating the formula and updating the formula. And we get 67787, seven, which is nothing of the numbers that I've had from before. I had a mean of 6.4, oh, 6.412. I had a mean of 6.412. And a variance. Well, I didn't write any of the variance information down. So this didn't include my data. And then if we included my data, it went down to 6.33 in terms of the, the mean. Um, and so our standard deviation is 6.7787. So here is our table to do standard deviation. Now, I can't remember. Um, I, I think I'm pretty good with Excel. There are plenty of people that are way better than me, but I think I'm pretty good with Excel. 
but I don't remember if having these labels in here messes this next thing up that I'm gonna to try to do. What I want is that I don't want to have to change uh, these formulas every single time that I enter more or less data. So if I had five data points, I have to delete these and then change these five first five numbers, but I don't wanna to have to keep changing the formula and such. So I think what I want is to type in, I think it's A colon A, but I don't think if that, I don't remember if that label messes me up. Yeah, I probably should have tested it beforehand, but um, I'm seat of pantsing. So notice how when I change that from A something, colon A something to A colon A, it selects that whole column. So now I have the sum of all of those numbers. Now X sub I is not a number, so let's see if this still comes out with 6.412, and it does. It didn't affect this at all. What I think is gonna be a problem is it's gonna affect N because it's gonna count this because count just tells me if there's something in the cell. So instead of 18, instead of 17, I'm gonna get 18 when I change this to B colon B. Oh, I'm counting A colon A, and it's not counting the header, so it's doing it fine. Hmm, I hope that's going to be the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're good. Variance standard deviation didn't change. So now I don't have to change it. What if I put a number down here, 39, um, and I do have to copy these down, okay? I can, we can get away from that as well by doing the following. Oh, it didn't. I didn't have to. It automatically assumed. So 39 should jack our mean way up, which it did but it's not adjusting this automatically, the count. So our mean went up, but it went up more than it should have because we were only dividing by 17. So it's not, it's not, this is not updating automatically for I don't know why. Did I not, oh, maybe I didn't even actually change it. You're probably sitting there, because you didn't even change it, doofus. So yeah, I think it's gonna be counting X sub I. It's not though, it's figuring it out somehow. A sub A, it's figuring out not to count the X sub I. So it um, seems to be working okay. Um, you should probably check that each time you enter new data in here, like let's put a 52 in here. And that turned to 19 from 18. If we take 20, if we take this 20 and subtract one from it, we get 19, so that's still doing that correctly. Okay, 